please tell us your name and your current position. I'm Hans Fraunlob. I'm the uh, Head of Operations and Marketing at Belong. We're an employee benefits and rewards platform and uh, we've been operating for about a year now. Can you give us an overview of your career to date? Boy, uh, it's been all over the place. Uh, I grew up in Canada and in an IT sense, my first IT job was working for uh, a convenience store chain in Canada. But mm -hmm. I've worked in retail, I've worked in wholesale, I've worked in professional sports, I've worked in healthcare. I've been in New Zealand for 21 years, and in New Zealand I've worked for the likes of Telecom and uh, Jade Software. Uh, I've worked at New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, so it's been really varied, and I think that's been one of the things I really enjoyed, is variety and problem solving. Can you give me an example of any of those particular positions that you've been in? Yeah, I think the uh, bringing out the inner geek in me, I think the thing that uh, I, one of the jobs I really enjoyed was managing IT for the baseball team, because I had a chance to blend uh, technology and the application of technology in professional sports, which I uh, was an enormous fan of uh, mm. the team and the sport. So it was a lot of fun to try and add value to the people on the baseball side of the business in terms of analysis around scouting. Um, I wrote an application to actually do player positioning and pitch tracking and it was a lot of fun to be able to bring technical knowledge into something that uh, I loved as a fan. In your current job, can you tell me what a day-to-day -day would look like? It can be everything from uh, working with our service providers that are bringing benefits to our customers and their employees. It can be around technical integrations, around our technology platform, and trying to think of better ways to understand our end customers better. Uh, it can be around business process and just making sure operationally that we're sound. So there's a lot of variety, mm -hmm. um, and it's really challenging. And I think one of the things that I've learned over the years is uh, never get too wedded to a particular approach. Try to learn from everything and always look for a, a better way. So in your opinion, what has actually changed in the industry that you work in? I think what's changed now, uh, today and very much for the better in my mind, is uh, technology has been really democratized. And if you're a business user, you know, you can literally log on to an app anywhere and start doing something. Mm -hmm. You used to need a battalion of people to get you to be able to do that, so now it's very much more accessible. That brings its own challenges because integration and making something coherent out of a bunch of available parts is now, I think, much more the game yes. in technology and understanding how things work with other things. Uh, around any of the process implications around trying to make a whole out of a bunch of different parts. So that's very much changed. And the other thing I think that's really changed for the better, I think the industry has always looked for people that uh, have real aptitude and interest in the business as opposed to the technology. Now it's kind of mandatory. And uh, if I'm looking at uh, marketing roles, for example, uh, traditional technologist would probably not consider that a career path for themselves. They might be thinking, I'm going to be a coder or I'm going to uh, do front-end development. Whereas today, uh, the blend of information-driven and data-driven marketing and communications means that a marketer can't be effective anymore unless they've got a degree of technical knowledge and understanding in terms of communications technologies. And a good person with a good technical bent, but they can apply themselves to other areas of the business, whereas 30 years ago, uh, those worlds would have never met. Uh, today, those worlds are inexorably intertwined, and so I would encourage anybody starting in the, in the business is to not box yourself in to being the uh, person that does tech stuff. Uh, you can be the person that does operations stuff. You can be the person that does sales stuff. You can be the person that does marketing stuff. Because in all of those disciplines now, technology is applied. What do you expect to be the most in-demand IT roles over the next couple of years? Boy, it's really difficult to, to predict something like that. Yeah, if I would have thought about the early 1990s when there was no such thing as a web developer and all of a sudden three years later everybody in the world was looking for web developers and HTML coders. Uh, the pace of change changes so quickly that it's difficult to zero in on a particular role. I think what will be in high demand will be people with understanding of, of data and analytics. So data analytics and integrations I think are always going to be in demand. Um, I think if you're uh, an old school coder, and I can say that because I started life as an old school coder, um, 
be prepared for your tool set to change constantly. So uh, when I was starting in, uh, in the business, uh, your coding skills and the technologies you're familiar with, you, know, you might have had a five to 10 year lifespan with those. Now you might have a 18 month lifespan before the next set of frameworks and technologies overtakes what you already knew. So um, the other skill I think that uh, was gonna be in demand is somebody that can relearn and can actually adapt because that's the order of the day. What can job seekers do to stand out from the crowd? I think just showing an interest. Uh, what always differentiates things for me when uh, I'm in, on the hiring side of the desk is does this person actually understand and are they actually interested in our business? You know, do they, do they really want to work for the business as opposed to take the job and get the, get the salary? So if they're more interested in the business and what they can do and why they care about it than the job, then that to me is a real differentiator. How do you keep up to date with developments in the space that you work in? It's really challenging um, and it is a matter of finding a balance. Our, our company belong, we're employee focused and so uh, we talk a lot about work life and balance and I think the same thing applies to technology. You can overdo it. Uh, you can uh, try to stay across every last technical development down to the nth degree and because it changes so quickly I think there are diminishing returns. So a lot does depend on um, what you're being tasked to do in your business and uh, it is important to stay current. Um, it's certainly important to understand the business problem that you're trying to solve because today there are invariably eight ways to solve it. And so it's an understanding the breadth of potential approaches you could take to a particular problem. So what do you think sets New Zealand apart on the global stage around manufacturing and IT? I think because New Zealand is so small, our tech companies and our manufacturing companies are really, really comfortable at uh, general purpose problem solving. So because we're not so stovepiped, our engineers understand the whole continuum from what the machine has to do to make something, but they actually understand the customer problem that they're trying to solve. And I think the same thing applies to IT firms. So I think our successful companies understand the customer problem really well. They typically work in a number of different industries because they have to. In a, in a market the size of New Zealand, it's very difficult to say, I'm just the traffic light company. You have to be something for everybody. And when they go overseas, their competitors typically are just the traffic light company and they don't understand anything about other industries. Our companies understand a lot. So it's that breadth of perspective and the understanding right across what it takes to manufacture or produce their solution and it's also how that solution is going to be used in different lines of business. Quite often they can creatively come up with a solution that works really, really well in the construction industry and then apply it to medicine because they've seen that in that context and their competitors often haven't. Is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know? I think New Zealand is, is an amazing country. Um, as you can tell by my accent, I came here from somewhere else even though my mother was a New Zealander. And, uh, New Zealand's a nation of immigrants and the technology industry uh, is the United Nations of industries in New Zealand. So uh, for uh, people that have come to New Zealand from other countries, what I'd like to say if you're in the technology industry is, is think about the kinds of things uh, that I was speaking about earlier in terms of things that differentiate you as, as a candidate. Uh, so don't get hung up on uh, your language, although language is really important, but take an interest, take the time to actually understand the business that you're approaching for work. Uh, invest that time in actually understanding that and I think you'll find that that will help you uh, break through some, uh, some barriers and get you interviews that you're perhaps not getting now. Take the time to actually understand the business that you're looking to join Convince yourself that it's something that would be exciting to you if you joined that business and that you'd be passionate about. And I think you'll find that your success rate in, in getting interviews and ultimately roles will go up. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It's been wonderful getting to know you. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it.